The first step to doing a proper analysis in SPSS is having your variables set up properly. We're going to begin with a blank data set. Then we'll create five variables. And then we'll learn how different types of numeric variables should be set up so that we can use them for calculating statistics. I will begin by opening SPSS on my computer. If you were continuing from the previous video, you will already have SPSS open. We see the splash page. I will dismiss the opening dialog box. And we are ready to get started. This is a blank SPSS dataset. You can get a dataset like this by opening SPSS or by using the drop down menu File, New, Data. By default, the dataset opens in Data View, and we could begin entering data right now. But best practices are to define our variables first and then enter data. So let's go to Variable View. Creating a new variable in SPSS is incredibly easy. If you can type, you can create a variable. In fact, that is how you create a variable. You type its name. In the first row, under Name, type the word Subject, and then click Return on Mac or Enter on PC. Congratulations! You have just created your first variable in SPSS. Now you can see that by default, SPSS sets up your variable in a specific way, and you may or may not be satisfied with these default settings. I'm never happy with default settings, so let's change them a little. First, this variable is the subject number, a random number to identify one person from another. These will be whole numbers, no decimals. I want to set the decimals to zero. To do this, click next to the two. Some up and down arrows appear. I could add decimals by clicking the up arrow, or I could click the down arrow all the way to zero. Next, I'm going to set the measure to nominal. A subject number is a random number that fills in for a person's name. Anytime that a number stands for a name or category, it is a nominal variable. Here is what you need to know about variable names in SPSS. The variable name must begin with a letter. You can use numbers in the name, but you cannot begin with them. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, but they are advanced techniques that require using syntax. Two, each variable name must be unique. You cannot have two variables with the same name. Three, no spaces are allowed. If you enter a variable name containing a space, you'll get an error message about the variable name containing an illegal character. If you do, dismiss the error message and try something else with your variable name. You can, however, use an underscore in place of a space. Just don't end your variable name with an underscore or a period. That will cause conflicts later. Alternately, you can use camel case, also known as camel caps or medial capitals. Camel case is where you type compound words beginning each new word with a capital letter. And finally, the variable name must be 64 characters or less, preferably a lot less. Keep your variable names relatively short. Next, I am going to create a variable called study. This is going to be the hours spent studying by each person. To create this variable, I type study and then return. Congratulations, you have just created your second variable in SPSS. Again, hours spent studying will be an integer, a whole number. So I set the decimals to zero. This time, because time measured in hours is a ratio scale, I'm going to set the measure to scale. Here's a quick aside about levels of measurement. Numbers can tell us three things. Numbers can stand for names and tell us which one or what kind. So one equals male and two equals female. These are nominal variables. Numbers can represent an order, such as first place, second, third, etc. These are ordinal variables. And finally, Numbers can tell us about an amount, such as how many or how much. 
These values always have equal intervals between them. But depending on whether the numbers could allow for negative values, or if they have a true zero, we call them interval or ratio. In SPSS, both interval and ratio data, any data that indicate an amount, are called scale data. Next, we are going to create a variable called test. This will be the student's score on the first test. Type test. Set the decimals to zero. Set the measure to scale. See, you're getting the hang of this. Now create a variable called anxiety. This is going to be a score on a measure of test anxiety. Leave the decimals set to two. Set the measure to scale. Good, one more. The last variable that we need is gender. Set the decimals to zero and set the measure to nominal because gender is a categorical variable where numbers will stand in for male and female. Variable names are relatively short and may not be very descriptive. Therefore, it is useful to provide more detailed labels for each of your variables. Variable labels can be pretty much anything that you care to type. They can contain spaces, numbers, letters, special characters, and they're incredibly useful. I encourage you to always use labels for your variables. As a researcher, you will create numerous data sets. And there is nothing more frustrating than going back to some data that you collected a year ago or more and finding the variables named Q1, Q2, Q3, or worse yet, VAR0001, with no indication of what they mean. And even if you think that you remember what they mean, you could be wrong. So if you use those variables for publication, you could be mistaken, and that leads to all kinds of trouble. So the solution is to always use labels. Start by clicking in the blank space under Label for the first variable, Subject. Label the variables in order. Subject is random ID number. Study, hours spent studying. Test, score on test one. Anxiety, score on anxiety scale. Gender, gender. So yeah, we really wouldn't need to label gender because the name is self-explanatory, but I want you to get in the habit of using labels. There is something else about gender that we need to know. We are using numbers one and two to stand in for male and female. We need to know who is who. For that, we use value labels. Some variables, particularly nominal and ordinal level variables, will have different levels or values attached to them. For instance, you might code males as one and females as two. Or you might code freshmen as one, sophomores as two, juniors as three, seniors as four. You can define these levels in the values column in SPSS. Under Values, click on the cell for gender where it says None. You will see an icon with three dots. Click it. This activates the Value Labels dialog box. Here we can define 1 equals male and 2 equals female. Now, of course, we could make that 1 equals female or use 0 and 1, so 0 equals female. Remember that these numbers are codes. They do not indicate value or order. I recommend getting into a habit of coding and then keeping it consistent for you. So when I code gender, I always use one equals male, two equals female in my data entry, so I am consistent. If I'm coding an item that is yes or no, I will use one equals yes, zero equals no. And I'll do the same thing for any variable where zero indicates absence of something or non-belonging to the other category. On the other hand, if I have variables like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, I would just use one, two, three, four. 
So now we have a data set that is all set up and ready to use. All we need are some numbers. Click on the tab Data View at the bottom of the SPSS window. You will be taken to the Data Editor, in which you can enter numeric values for each variable. This is Data View with some data in it. You do not need to enter data right now, but I want to show you one other trick. In the Gender column, type some random 1s and 2s. Doesn't matter which rows get which number, just put some in. Now click on the Value Labels button. For all variables with codes, like gender, this button will toggle back and forth between the numbers and the value labels. So here's one more thing. Go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. This is how we would calculate some statistics. You can see that our variables are in this box, and currently we see the variable labels. Right-click on any variable and choose Display Variable Names. Right-click again, and you can toggle back and forth. This will be handy later on. Click Cancel to close the dialog box. You can save your data file by clicking File, then Save. Save the file to your desktop or to your personal file as Students. The suffix .sav, indicating an SPSS file, will be added automatically. If you were planning to use R or JASP, you would save your data as a .csv.